my whole career is basically built on WebRTC, I realized <laughs> the other day. Like basically PeerCDN was WebRTC, WebTorrent was WebRTC. And if, for those who don't know, WebRTC is just the, the, the protocol you use to connect two browsers to each other for peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. video or voice or data transfer. Uh, yeah, and and uh, Speakeasy was WebRTC, Wormholes WebRTC. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's definitely the the thread uh, where I learned where I learned about WebRTC. It all started with that. Yeah. So can we talk about those? So I know you've been spending a lot of time on these most recent projects with Wormhole, for example. What what is it, and why did you build it? So Wormhole is the fastest way to send files. And it, it's a browser, uh, it's a website you go to, wormhole.app. You go there, you drop your files on the page and uh, we, we, we encrypt them using a key that's generated in your browser. And then we give you a link that you can send to somebody. And the cool thing we, is we give you the link as soon as you drop the files on the page. So there's no need to wait for them to upload to the server. So if you wanna send somebody like a huge, you know, let's say five gigabytes of files, normally the process is you go to like Dropbox or something and you put them into the folder, you wait for them to upload. Um, if you're on a slow connection, that might be an hour or two hours. You get the link, uh, you get the share link and you send it to somebody. Um, with Wormhole, what you do is you drop the files on the page, no account needed, no, no registration, nothing. You just go, go to our site, you drop your files on the page. We give you a link immediately within two seconds. You send that mm -hmm. link to somebody and then the files continue to upload in the background. So that means that you can just sort of get the link, send it to the person, and then you can move on with your life. You don't have to think about coming back after two hours and remembering to get the link. So that's one thing. Mm. But then on top of that, we add end-to-end -end encryption, which means that we can't see your files like Dropbox can. So like Dropbox will claim, you know, we encrypt your data and we protect it, et cetera, et cetera, which is true. They do encrypt your data. But what they don't tell you is that they have the decryption key. So you know, you can think of encryption like a lock, right? It's like a, it's like a lock where, you know, it's not enough to just say that something is locked up. The most important question is, well, who has the key to unlock it? And in the case mm. of like most cloud services, you know, the, the, the service provider has the key to unlock the data. So uh, we're, we're, we've designed wormhole where we don't have the key. The key is generated on your machine and it never leaves your machine. Um, and when you send that link to the person you're sending the files to, that link contains the key as well. And so you're directly giving the key to the person you want to access your files. And our servers never see the key. We never get a copy of the key at any point in the process. So we, there's literally no way for us to, to view the data at all. Um, and, and lastly, the other thing we do is we support streaming just like WebTorrent does. So what that means is um, when you send that link to the, to the recipient, they can start to download files that they're interested in before the upload is finished. So, mm -hmm the data will go directly from your browser to their browser using WebRTC and WebTorrent, which are you know, the things I've been working on my whole career, basically. Yeah. So that's why that's how it kind of comes full circle. It's built completely on that same stuff. So that's, that's, the, that's the magic of it. Yeah, I, I think that's really compelling from a technical standpoint. There's clearly a lot of technical sophistication that you've built into it uh, to make it performant, resilient, and secure. Um, and one thing I'm curious about is that I noticed that you do have investors for Wormhole, right? So um, how do you bridge the gap between this technically very interesting project and now you actually have some expectation, I imagine, from the investors to actually make money, right? Or maybe, maybe not. Like, are the people who are putting money in because they, they support you? Like, wow, Ross is really smart. We'll just do it. We'll support anything he does. Or are they actually looking for like a VC scale return on investment? I think it's both. I mean, they, they want to, everyone who I've taken as an investor wants to support me personally because they, they have confidence in me and my track record, but they obviously want to make money as well. They're, 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 uh, you know, th this isn't like a charity <laughs> situation. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a VC backed business. So we have to go for, you know, VC scale outcomes. And this is a new process for, for me, I would say, you know, given I explained how peer CDN worked. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's, you know, we're going for a, a, for a big outcome. And so, you know, when it comes to stuff like wormhole, there's certain lines we'll never cross. I mean, we're not going to um, ever, you know, do anything that compromises the end-to-end -end encryption. Um, and we're like, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, just stick ads on it. That'll, that'll help you monetize wormhole, you know, just get a lot of, just keep it free and put a bunch of ads on it. But we can't do that either because we've designed it from like day one to, to have a lot of, of security features like we are using um you know content security policy is this this thing that lets you sort of control 
like what code can run on your site. And that's just one example of something where if we wanted to include ads on our site, we would need to change basic security things we've done to protect the app to allow like this random third party ad code to run within the context of wormhole. And that's just something that we're not going to be, we're not mm. going to do at any point because it just, it completely destroys the design uh, compromises our, our, our vision for what wormhole should be. And so our plans right now for making money are to introduce a pro plan. And the nice thing about that is a pro plan is giving more features to users and they're going to pay for those features. And so it's very straightforward. You know, they're going to pay for what they get. They're the, they're the customer, you know, they're not the product. Um, and, and we're, uh, we're working on that right now. So in the next few weeks or months, we'll, we'll have something to announce there. And help me understand. So you have this other thing called socket, which I mean, the way I read it, it's kind of like an umbrella where you have wormhole speak easy, and you might have other things. And based on the description on the website, it sounds like you're basically trying to test or do cutting edge things in the browser, like test the functionality of what could actually be possible within a web browser. So how, how are these things related? Like, are you spending all your time on wormhole or do you have like delegate out parts of, you know, speak like, uh, where is the resource allocation in terms of all the projects that you have going on? It's primarily wormhole right now. Um, that's the thing that's taken most of our attention because it's getting a lot of traction. So we sort of mm -hmm. follow that, I think. Um, going forward, I think we, we, we do probably want to focus in on like one or two primary things, but right yeah. now, right now wormhole is the main focus and we're, we're broadly interested in end-to-end -end encryption and in security and privacy and in, in, uh, anything that involves, um, the web browser. We're very bullish on the web. We think that like, it's, it's like you know, one of the most powerful runtimes and it's pre-installed on everyone's devices. And uh, we like that there's no gatekeepers. And so uh, we're just, yeah, we're super bullish on the web and we're, we're super good at doing web things too. That's the other thing too. You have mm -hmm. to know what you're good at and focus on, on that. So that's kind of, that's how we're thinking about it. When you say we, how big is a team right now? And are you looking, how, how aggressively are you looking to grow? So we're three people right now and we're, probably looking to add one or two more people in the coming months. Um, we want to keep the team really small and just have like the best people join. We'd rather have like, you know, five superstars than, than 10 or 15 more average people. But I know everyone probably says that about their company, but I really mean it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I believe you. I mean, I think you have the track record to back that up and, and actually find the really best people. Um, so I, I'm excited to see kind of what happens with, with wormhole. And, and whatever else you end up building in that portfolio. Um, so la, kind of one of the last questions I have on my end is, one of the things I noticed is that you have a fairly large audience. Um, like on Twitter, I think you have like 25 or 30K followers. On GitHub, you have a pretty large following. Um, so I'm curious, is that something that you've consciously worked on, developing an audience of people who know you and trust you? Or is that something that happened as a byproduct of you just building things that you are interested in? I definitely was a byproduct. I think like I remember getting a whole bunch of followers after the YouTube instant thing happened. And I mean, I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't predict that or plan that it was just sort of this thing I made went viral and a bunch of people started using it. And um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's sort of, I, I think it's, I think it's a natural byproduct of just talking about your work. I think it just, it's a thing that just happens slowly over time. If you share what you're working on and it's interesting then people just want to follow. Um, but I do think, I mean, yeah, there, there, there is, I would say it's been very helpful to me. It's not something I intentionally like went out of my way to cultivate, but it is a thing that I'm really glad that I have because whenever I want to talk about a new product I've built or a new hack or whatever, I could just share it with this audience. And yeah. I mean, it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier where, um, having that large audience gives you more opportunities to get lucky when you do hit that publish button or when you do launch whatever product you're building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think blogging was was really helpful too. Um, I, I think I haven't done that too much lately, but that's that's also a thing that um, I think more people, should, it forces you to kind of get your ideas out and figure out mm -hmm. how to like lay them out clearly and, and um, forces you to even like reflect on like, well, what did I learn in the last month that I could write a post yeah. about, you know? Um, and practice my writing and practice my, like my, um, just, yeah, explain, like explaining a technical concept, you know, this uh, cause you're a teacher, but you don't really know something until you've explained it. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, it's no, just... I, 
I think that's great. Like write, writing is thinking. I feel like you don't really understand something unless you put it on paper and you grapple with the words and the sentence structure and how to explain something. Writing is very, very valuable from that perspective. So 100% agree. Okay, this is really fun for us. I, I hope that we get a chance to meet up at Stanford because we're both teaching there in the fall. Um, anything else you want to share? Uh, no, I mean, just check out Wormhole. It's pretty cool. Wormhole.app. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, my email is just my name at uh, myname.org. So for us at frost.org. And you can just send me your feedback. Uh, tell me what you think of it. And uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions for new features or, or find any bugs or anything, please let me know because we're trying to make it the best way to send files. Um, and if anyone wants to chat about other things, peer-to-peer -peer stuff or open source or security, just also feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to, to chat with people. Awesome. I'll leave a link to Wormhole in the description along with all of your social handles. And if you enjoy this conversation, please like and subscribe to, to the video, to, to my channel. Um, and I'll leave links for all the relevant things that we talked about. Um, all right. Thanks so much for us for, for joining and looking forward to see what, what else you do. Yeah. I'm super excited to meet up with you when we're both at Stanford and uh, the pandemic is now over. So we can, we yeah. can actually see each other in person. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks think, a lot. Thanks, Have a great thanks, day. Bro. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Bye.